well uh, by now all of all of us must have got some feel on how cbm is done on machineries uh, in the last class i discussed about how noise and vibration are monitored in a railway locomotive vis a vis the track condition the vehicle speed and so on now i will today i will introduce you to another such interesting topic from the real world uh, on paper mills thank you so paper mill vibration monitoring uh, before i get into the paper mill i will briefly tell you what we intend to do and what was desired to do so you know in paper mill the plant speed is actually given in the linear speed in meters per minute so if i need to increase the speed the productivity of the plant would increase and every owner of a plant would like the productivity to increase okay so the objectives of this study which we did uh, at iit kharagpur for a plant in india that we wanted to check you know first of all whether the plant existing plant is strong enough to endure the stresses and vibrations because of running at 700 meters per minute and if some modifications are done to achieve this what has to be done in terms of not damaging the plant in terms of structurally in terms of damaging the bearings and so on so before i get into the details of how it is done i will briefly explain you how paper is actually produced in such paper mills so uh, well uh, just to briefly to come back to the scope of this work was or let me come back to how a paper mill works okay now if you see here there are you will see lot of these are rolls okay and this black line is actually what is being fed to the paper mill so basically it's a slush of waste paper wood bark with water cleaned with caustic soda etc after all this has been chemically treated washed cleaned this pulp is actually fed on a wire rope basically there's a wire so this is full of a slush full of a lot of liquid in it and then there is a pressing section here so there is a roll here which press onto this and after the initial pressing okay you will see the water is squeezed out of this slush which forms the bulk of the paper and these are all basically chemical treating uh, treatment areas wherein you can have the waste paper so when we the raw material for the paper is actually either used paper or wood bark or a combination of them and they are thoroughly washed with caustic soda okay and this forms a very liquid okay slosh is there so when such slosh is fed onto the wires and i'll show you the pictures in a little bit and then basically if they are pressed the initial pressing is there water will be squeezed out and this will be a wet damp layer of paper which would come out eventually what happens so this paper has to be slowly pressed and then again it has to be dried so these rolls are big rolls wherein we put dry steam so they are steam dried and each of these rolls could be about a close to a meter in diameter and the width could be as long as 4 meters okay so you can have a 4 meter by rolls of or sheets of paper coming out through a number of these dryer rolls and then finally there is a sizing press and again after the dryers they are again 
again uh, dried after dryers. So, here it is actually the white paper actually starts to come out and then the end we have what is known as the calendaring wherein we press calendar is nothing but like ironing your textile or shirts or garments. We similarly iron the paper and of course, finally, the pop reel where the everything is taken off. So, if the plant's output is you know 80 tons per day, somebody wants to make it 100 tons per day or per, uh, per hour, obviously the speed at which the paper is being fed through these rolls has to increase. So, the problem becomes twofold. One is then I need to increase the linear speed of all these uh, I mean the linear speed that means I need to increase the rotational speed. So, what would happen because these are all rolls some of these rolls may undergo critical speed they would be under the condition of resonance. So, increase of speed increase of linear paper output speed would mean increase the roll rpm. But you know by now when I have a roll or a shaft it has certain rotational natural frequency or what is known as its critical speed. So, by by increasing the speed I may so happen this increased speed may become equal to omega n. So, I will have the condition of resonance. So, resonance means large motion. So, this will be unstable and then eventually things may fail or break that is one. Now, because of this increase in speed the loads would increase. Okay, if loads increase what happens? Because you are giving out more paper per hour or okay. So, if the loads increase the loads on the bearings which are supporting would increase load on bearings. I will show you how the loads on the bearings are calculated and then loads on the structure. Okay. So, these are the problems. So, if somebody asks you to check for a linear speed meters per minute whether your plant is safe, we need to say through an analysis whether the plant is safe because of the stresses, because of the resonance conditions. And so, this is briefly how a paper plant works. Now, let me come back to what we needed to do because to calculate any stress on any structure okay, techniques of FEM are available standard softwares are available to do an FEM stress analysis. But then if I have a structure like this some sort of a structure okay, which is supporting the rolls this is just a side view. So, the dimensions of these are first to be known, but we were given this task to a very old plant where no drawings existed. Okay. So, this was a challenge to us. So, we had to first find out measure the dimensions. So, we had to measure the dimensions of the critical sections and maybe even in a structure the thickness is unknown from the outside. What is the thickness? Is it 5 mm? Is it 10 mm? How do you know of an existing plant? So, I will just tell you how it is done. Then of course, we have to generate the 3 D CAD drawings of the sections and then do a, the FE analysis of all the frames 
determine the natural frequency of the frames to see that they do not coincide with the operating speeds and then calculate the critical speeds of the all the rows. Okay. So, this is just a view of the pulp press you know the pulp which comes in this is actually a wire and this some of them are about 4 meter long. So, okay. and this is in the pressing sections you can see a big roll here. Okay. So, they are hydraulically operated. Okay. Then uh, this is the view of the dryer. Okay. You can see a big dryer which are stream dried and this is a big roll driven by an individual motor sometimes, sometimes and then this is the bellows through which hot steam is inserted inside the drum. The dryer rolls are actually hollow drums. Each of the dryer rolls are supported on bearings, but then they are connected to steam inlet. So, the paper which goes in here is heated and thus it is dried. So, one roll is not sufficient enough to give the amount of heat required. So, they have to be continuously. So, these dry rolls there could be 100 such rolls in a standard paper mill. Okay. Now, as you will see each of these dryers are supported on bearings and you will see accelerometers have been mounted permanently installed and you will see this steel cabling they are nothing but signals coming out of every bearing of the rolls and which go to a central server and then of course, we have the number of the bearing then we can find out what if there is a problem. And you all know now by looking at the FFT analysis or doing the spectrum analysis of the vibration signal, you can tell for sure whether there is a fault in the bearing and so on and so forth. So, major sections wire frame, the couch roll stand, the press dryer, pressing is there, and then few of the dryers, the pre dryer and the post dryer, and then the calendar, and the final is the pop roll. So, our investigation criteria was estimation of the static stress at all the paper mill machine components and check for safe stress values. If they were not safe, we need to reinforce structurally, but most is important is check against occurrence of mechanical resonances between frames and rolls, because if a frame has a natural frequency, the roll natural frequency or the roll operating frequency must not coincide with the frames resonance. And of course, we can estimate the loads on the bearings and estimate the life and check for the drive shaft dimensions for the new power rating, right? whether they are safe or not. Because the problem happens if you increase from 700 MPM to maybe even 750 MPM, you can understand all the speeds would increase. I may have undergoing into a resonance, there could be high stresses, things would fail and uh, thus this has happened. There were no dimensions available. Okay. So, we you know to measure from long distances, we measure used a laser based ultrasonic meter to measure the dimensions. You know this, this height could be you know somewhere about 8 meters to 6 meters to get the exact height we used to shoot a laser beam and get the. So, such laser based distance electronic meters are available. Ultrasonic thickness is the thickness as you had seen earlier ultrasonics can be used to measure the thickness of an unknown and of course, wherever necessary we also used a measuring tape caliper and ruler. So, once such dimensions were measured we constructed the CAD model and we use a commercial software ANSYS and then of course, model them by giving a displacement constraint, giving appropriate stiffness and damping of the rolls because of the bearings 
and then the loads on the foundations were calculated loads from the on the fe models with the roll weight because these rolls are pretty heavy and then the tensions and the centrifugal efforts and then of course the model analysis was performed because in such a large plant it becomes humanly impossible to do experimental model analysis and by the way let me tell you all these measurements of the dimensions were done while the plant was in operation plant is in operation because no owner or management would like to shut down because you know shut down costs money and because you know plant is in operation dimensions have to be measured so we need to have the right kind of instrumentation to measure them and then of course you make a cad model out of them you make your fe model and do the analysis so i'm going to go through some of the fe models and the conclusions and so on so by the way to estimate the bearing load estimations uh this is the weight of the roll or the cylinder and then the angle of a wrap needs to be known so you can calculate the dryer or the mg roll these are the rolls you can calculate the loads similarly for the dryer similarly for the grind roll suction roll press roll calendar roll so all these expressions are known to estimate the loads so these loads would be applied on the uh, models and they would all change with the belt pulley because if you are going to transfer more material at a higher speeds these values would change and of course there are recommended bearing lives in terms of years of service so we have to calculate the bearing life and this is mostly a design problem those of you who know the design calculations for estimating the bearing life we need to have the right estimate of the loads be it radial and axial or a combination and the duration you want for the bearing or the plant to operate and from that you can find out the bearing dynamic rating capacity and then you can select the bearings so and then of course the analytical calculations was bearing load estimation as per the bearing standards for paper mills bearing life estimation for increased speed minimum required shaft diameter for new drive rating so this was done now this is an cad model of the wire frame and suction couch roll stand this is right in the beginning so this is the suction couch stand and then the wire frame okay the major components are modeled once the cad was available we needed to have the fpm model showing the locations of the forces and the constraints and then of course we can estimate the stresses and the deflection and then ensure that the stresses and deflection are within the limits and most important is the wire frame resonance whether any resonance is occurring you know particularly this frequencies are given here and so on similarly for the couch roll force and constraints these are the constraints because they are the grounded the yellow colors and the red one are the forces coming at the bearing locations similarly you estimate the stresses okay the stresses seems to be safe and of course there is resonance so we need to estimate the frequencies similarly for the press loads and constraints are given the, the, because these are the, all the frames so if these hold the rolls the forces come onto these frames and then we can uh, estimate the loads uh, this is the cad model of the press this is the stress and deflection calculated out of the fem results okay and then of course you can see the resonance of the plate okay of the press similarly for this dials you know these frames each one of them hold many uh, rolls okay so we have to see that loads and constraints there are the loads and the constraints and similarly the stress and deflection for the pre dryer were done pre dryer resonances similarly for the post dryer so you know all these typical dimensions let me give you a feel of the dimensions this is about 4 meters and this is about you know, 8 meters so you can imagine 
such models for the entire plant has to be done for all the sections for the press section for the pre dryer post dryer couch suction couch calendar popril so everything because no component can be under resonance because you know as a cbm engineer you would be only perhaps monitoring real time bearing vibration real time but if then somebody increase the speed of the plant these vibrations would increase and one has to be safeguard against resonance so to safeguard against resonance one has to do such analysis because this is a plant where no technical specs specifications is available other than the output in tons per hour okay because the owner who may not have any engineering idea may say well how do i increase from you know 80 tons per hour to 100 tons he would say if he had no engineering sense well increase all the speeds but the problem with increasing speeds is conditions of high stresses resonances so we as you know designers engineers cbm specialists need to do this kind of a study in the background and then recommend to the cbm guys well you know we are having roll resonances so avoid operating at a certain speed or tell them the safe range of linear operating speeds and that is most important particularly in machines or in plants where there are many such machines and similarly for the post dryer you can see again the loads there are many loads and the stresses stress and deflection and you can see the resonances so if there is high resonances maybe we have to stiffen it and then check the model against the new natural frequencies similarly for the post dryer loads constraints stress and deflection resonances okay and similarly for the calendar calendar is a location where finally between the two rolls the paper comes out okay and it is actually pressed so we have a uniform thickness of the paper in fact to measure the thickness there is a roving ultra sonic probe along the length and breadth so this is a paper supported on rolls there is a roving ultrasonic paper and sometimes it's an ultrasonic or a laser beam is used to measure the paper thickness because the paper quality depends on the paper thickness and there should be no shrinkage and then if i increase the speed what would happen if i increase the speed of all the rolls okay. they go both of them are going in the same direction sorry okay. so paper is coming out in this direction now imagine if 
I increase the speed. So, this would lead to high vibrations. And this may lead if they lead to resonances, these paper thickness may not be the same. So, at all the frames of the paper mill, all frames supporting the rolls stress analysis is to be done and also model analysis. Supporting the rolls and the rolls. Okay. And this is done by a standard FEM package. So, similarly you see the stress and deflection, the resonances. Again for the pop reel, the last reel where the paper rolls come out and then, then they are eventually transported. Okay. So, we found out the maximum stress by our analysis and they happen to be safe for all the sections through this study. But then we studied the roll critical speed for all the rolls by an FEM analysis and then we calculated the resonance conditions for all the rolls because there are many dryer felt rolls and dryer rolls. So, we ensured that these are to be avoided. So, certain RPM there is a problem of the paper lead roll before dryer where the resonances were close to the operating speed. So, we had to vary the speed and do a modifications. Okay. And of course, the supporting beams also needs to be checked for stresses. And of course, to do such analysis, we had to take the mass of these units. You now, this you can come get from the CAD models. And once you have the density, you can uh, get the CAD more from the CAD models. Mass can be estimated. So, this gives you an idea as to for a plant where no technical specification is known, how from the increased operating speed one can be sure that no problem, problem is going to occur in the bearing or what is the bearings life and whether it is safe to operate the plant at these conditions. Okay. Thank you.